Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad. It's a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. Welcome back to another edition of the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and thank you, as always, for checking out the show. On this week's Sports Now, start this thing out with a little fall sports update, and include a little crosstown action and some local playoff prep soccer action. And as always, our prep football roundup. Then we'll get to some Chris and Bobcats football talks to close this thing out. Let's just get this thing off and running with some cross-country action that took place in town last week as the Flathead Cross Country Program had a strong day at the Glacier Invitational Meet at Rebecca Farm last Tuesday with Flathead sweeping the boys and girls titles. The Flathead girls were led by Josie Wilson, Lily Rumsey Eish, and McKenna Conan who finished 2, 3, and 4 respectively for the Bravettes. Glacier freshman Laura Bisson took home first place for the Wolfpack. Strong showing there for the freshmen. As for the boys, Robbie Nuala landed the top spot, beating out Glacier's Owen Thiel, who finished second. Moving along, we had some crosstown volleyball action. Always fun to have the crosstown. This was round two of crosstown volleyball, and it went down last week at the Flathead High Gym, and Glacier pulled off the comfort behind win. Flathead took the first set of the match before Glacier won the final three sets to seal the crosstown sweep after also winning the first crosstown match of the year earlier this season. Flathead is now 6-14 and overall and 4-6 and in Western AA play, and Glacier moves to 13-7 and overall and 9-1 and in Western AA play. Strong showing from the Wolfpack on the volleyball scene. Let's dive into the prep soccer action as it's playoff season on the pitch. Starting with Class AA action, where the Glacier Wolfpack boys soccer team beat Butte 11-3 last Friday to claim their first ever Western AA soccer title and end Missoula Hellgate's Decade-long run as conference champions. Kudos to the Wolfpack for ending the night's run at the top of Western AA. Never easy to be the one to knock off the champs. Glacier head coach Ryan Billiot had this to say in a recap by the Interlake last Sunday. Our conference is very good, so it says a lot just to put ourselves in that position. And it's especially difficult to play teams twice in a season. I'm really proud they've had a growth, ment- a growth mentality but we feel there's still opportunity for improvement, and we've seen that each week, each game. It just c- continues to prepare us for the playoffs. Glacier also topped Flathead 6-0 Thursday in crosstown soccer action. The Wolfpack ended the regular season 13-1 and overall. Their only loss was to Missoula Hellgate, who ended third in Western AA at 10-3-1. and That would be an interesting playoff matchup if those two end up meeting. Helena Capital ended up second in Western AA at 10-2-2. Glacier has a first-round bye. The Class AA playoffs start this Tuesday. The Glacier girls soccer team, meanwhile, landed the fifth seed in Western AA and will match up with Flathead in a first-round game. So we'll have an update on that crosstown playoff soccer action, no doubt about it. The Bravettes, meanwhile, they landed the fourth seed in Western AA with the 3-2 win over rival Glacier in a crosstown matchup at Legends last Thursday. So the Bravettes had to win to get the top higher seed, but all that goes out the window because it'll be a home game for both Glacier and the Bravettes at Legends this week. It's going to be a fun one. We'll definitely update you on that next show, a little Crosstown Playoff Soccer. So this is the second year in a row the Bravettes did sweep Crosstown Soccer play. And that being said, Glacier will get a third crack at it in their playoff matchup this week. I'm sure they would like to get bragging rights back on their side, and a playoff win would do just that. So the Bravettes are going to be ready to defend bragging rights, leave it all out there, and I'm sure Wolfpack are going to be hungry to get it back. So that's going to be a fun playoff matchup, no doubt. Next up at the Class A level, the Whitefish Bulldogs picked up a home win in their conference quarterfinal by knocking off the defending state champion Billings Central Rams for nothing Saturday. Delaney Smith and Olivia Genovese each scored for the Bulldogs. Next up, the Bulldogs host number two, Lockwood from the East in the Class Double in the Class A, excuse me, semifinal this upcoming Saturday. As for the Bulldogs soccer squad, they picked up a two nothing quarterfinal win over Livingston at Smithfields and Whitefish with Ryder Elliott and Kyler Johnson scoring late goals to push the Bulldogs into the conference semifinal game. The Bulldogs continue their quest to a state title this Saturday with a home match versus Lone Peak. As for the Columbia Falls Wildcats, they picked up a 2-0 win of their own 
over the Southern number one seed, Hamilton, in their Class A quarterfinal Saturday. Josie Harris and Hope McAtee had the goals for the Wildcats. McAtee picked up an assist on the goal from Harris to land her 21st assist of the year and tie the state single-season record. Columbia Falls will host Big Fork next Saturday in a semifinal battle. Shout out to the Wildcats and McAtee there for making a little history. As for the Big Fork, as for Big Fork, excuse me, they notched an upset win over number one Laurel, who has won the last five state titles. Or excuse me, has won five state titles since 2014 and was unbeaten heading into their matchup with the Vikings. Peyton Gunlock and Danica Buckland scored early for the Vikings, and Bryn Bagley scored a late goal to seal the deal for Big Fork. Impressive win there. So. And worth mentioning, interesting note here from the Interlake last week, after Whitefish beat Billing Central and Big Fork beat Laurel, we are in line for a new Class A conference champion for the first time since 2007 as those two squads have dominated the conference for the last 15 years. That's pretty remarkable. So let's move on to the prep football scene where Flathead dropped their home finale with the Helena Capital Bruins 28-7 at Legend Stadium. The defending state champion Bruins jumped out to a 14-0 halftime lead and tacked on two scores in the third quarter and went on to win, excuse me, go up 28, nothing before the Braves kept fighting, put together an 80 yard scoring drive in the fourth. Jada Williams capped that off with a touchdown run at the 432 mark of the fourth quarter to get the Braves on the board. Next up for the Braves is their season finale on the road versus a winless Missoula Hellgate squad. So there's an opportunity flathead to close out the season with the win and keep that momentum going in the next season. Cause they've had a lot of, Highlights and flashes this year. Maybe only one win, but a lot of impressive moments and growth for the Braves, no doubt. Under the Wolfpack, who took home a 56-21 win over Missoula Big Sky on the road in a Western AA matchup. Sophomore QB Jackson Presley was at it again. He had a big day, 386 passing yards, two touchdowns. Two of those scores were to Cohen Castellitz, excuse me, who finished with six catches for 192 yards receiving. Big day for Castellitz. Glacier running back Kobe Dorges also had a huge day. Finished with three scores on 11 carries. Finished with 90 yards rushing. Braves commit Cash Go Kachia also made his presence felt with a 98-yard kick return for a touchdown and an eight-yard eight touchdown run in the fourth. So, he was at it again. Some familiar names on the show who've been putting up big numbers all season. Glacier's next matchup is their home finale as they host Missoula Sentinel on Thursday night at Legend Stadium. If the Wolfpack can win that one, they'll have a first round bye in the Western AA playoffs. That would be huge. So this is a big game for the Wolfpack, no doubt. Wolfpack head coach Grady Bennett had this to say about the win and their upcoming meeting with the Spartans. Just a good road win, setting us up for our last home game in senior night. We control our own, our own destiny. It's a good position to be in. Moving on to Western A, Columbia Falls and Big Fork met in a Western A matchup Friday, and the Wildcats came out victorious with a 51-30 to win on the road. Wildcats QB and Grizz commit. Cody Schweiker had a big day on the ground with 172 yards and four scores while completing an efficient 25-29 of 29 through the air for 377 yards and two touchdowns. Huge game for Schweiker. The game was 17-14 at halftime, so a big second half from the Wildcats propelled them to the win. Two interceptions in the second half came from Jace Hill and Mark Robinson, and both those were key. So big day for the Wildcats. The Wildcats moved to 5-2 and two overall in Western A play, and Big Fork is now 4-4 four and four overall and in league play in their first year playing at the A conference. Big Fork QB Tristan Hurd did have a big day in the loss. He threw for three touchdowns and 316 passing yards. Two of those were long touchdowns. Elijah Thornis, who finished with scores of 69 and 61 yards, he had six catches for 100, over 160 yards, receiving another big stat line from Thornis, another name we've seen pop up on the show a few times with huge numbers. In other Western A action, Polson picked up an overtime win over Whitefish with Lucian Sawyer nailing a clutch 23-yard field goal in the extra period to seal the win. Sawyer also had a rushing touchdown on the day in the fourth quarter, so he played a key role. Holden Emerson had a big day on the ground for the Pirates as well, scoring two touchdowns. As for the Bulldogs, Carson Golick rushed for two scores and threw for two more, but he did throw two interceptions on the day. So let's move on to some Cat Grizz football. Real quick, we'll get to a, a quick message from our friends at Nomad and then dive into a little Big Sky football action. To recap that Grizz win over Idaho and Montana State's win over Cal Poly.
All right, let's dive into the Grizz action. We're gonna give my I'm gonna basically give my one big takeaway from the Grizz win over Idaho and one big takeaway from Montana State's win over Cal Poly, and we'll look ahead a little bit to Montana Montana State's ranked matchup with Sac State. That'll be a nationally televised game, so that'll be a fun one. So for the Grizz, my big takeaway, I was texting Fritz Neighbor of the Daily Interlake recently, and we were talking how the Grizz, their style might not be pretty, but they really know how to win the ugly games. And that is my big takeaway from this game. Doesn't matter if it looks clean. Josh Allen of the Buffalo Bills just had a quote. An ugly win and a, and a clean win have the same meaning in the win column. I botched the quote. But the point being, you can't look at the box score for a Grizzlies game and know how they played. You really have to watch it and check how they play. They come with big plays in key situations time and time again. Regardless of the score, they can be up or down. They come up with clutch plays. So that's my big takeaway. The Grizz, the win over Idaho, it wasn't pretty. The win over UC Davis was flat out ugly at times, but it's a pair of wins over at the time ranked opponents in Big Sky play. So at the end of the day, the Grizzlies know how to win when the going gets tough. That's my big takeaway from this Grizzlies team. You can't look at the box score or how pretty it looks on the field, especially in today's world of college football. Montana State is a great example. We'll get to them. They have a clean offensive attack. They have a beautiful motion offense. It's like poetry in motion, as they say. The Grizzlies, it's a little bit ugly at times, but guess what? When it comes down to it, you look at the scoreboard at the end of the game, and they're winning football games. I've made the comparison before. Bobby Houck reminds me a little bit of the Ravens head coach, John Harbaugh. They might not win games clean. They might not have the most perfect style. Both guys have special teams backgrounds. Could be something there. But at the end of the day, they know how to control a football game and win on their terms. So that's what it's all about. The Grizzlies are now on a well-deserved buy after their huge win over Idaho and a ranked win over UC Davis. Here's another quick piece of Grizz football news, and we'll get to that Bobcats big takeaway in their matchup with Sac State. The Grizz landed Big Sky Defensive Player of the Week with Fairfield Product. Ryder Meyer getting the nod, and Big Sky Special Team Player of the Week went to Grizz kicker Glenn Glasgow. Exciting stuff there. Meyer led the team with eight tackles and had a key interception in the second half to help the Grizzlies maintain that lead and ultimately get the win. As for Glass, Glass Glau, he was huge. He nailed three field goals over 40 yards and was two for two on his PAT, so he played a key part in the win. And you got to think, Coach Bobby Houck loves that with his special teams background we just mentioned. So there's that. One last accolade for the Grizzlies. They took home the Stats Perform National FCS Team of the Week honors for their primetime win over the Vandals on ESPN2 with the win. The Grizzlies now sit at ninth in the national media poll and sixth in the national coaches poll. So don't look now, but the Grizzlies are all of a sudden looking like a premier contender at the FCS level once again. On to the Bobcats. We'll start with my one key takeaway, and then we'll get into that Cal Poly game. Or excuse me. We'll get to the Cal Poly game and then get to that Sac State, Montana State game coming up on ESPN2 this weekend in a battle of top five FCS teams. So big takeaway from that game. It's Cal Poly. It was a game they're expected to win. They rolled to a big victory. But their passing attack is evolving into a real weapon. Earlier this year on the show, I said multiple times, one of my concerns about the Bobcats is, will they be one-dimensional in the playoffs? What if their running quarterbacks start getting banged up? Can they throw the football to win games, add those wrinkles in the passing game? And they've done just that. And now it's a great compliment to their lethal rushing attack. So, yes, it was Cal Poly. Yes, it was a blowout. But they're adding those little additions to the passing game. It's becoming more crisp, more clean. And both Malat and Chambers have been efficient as passers. They were 14 of 24 combined for 243 yards and two scores. Tommy Malat's back, so that's going to make the Bobcats really hard to stop because Sean Chambers has been playing out of his mind. So this week, the Bobcats, they have their second top five matchup of the season. Earlier, they lost to South Dakota State on a very last play questionable call. All that aside, they travel to Sacramento this week to take on the Hornets in a battle of last year's Big Sky co-champions. Look for the Bobcats to pounce early in this one. Sac State hasn't quite looked like themselves. They've been a perennial power in the Big Sky the last few years. They look a little more vulnerable. They've been playing down to their competition. So that being said, it's an 8.30 kickoff, ESPN 2, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, ESPN 2, nationally televised game. I said this about the Grizzlies and Idaho last week. Things get a little wild in late-night college football. You do not want to let Sac State hang around at home because the Hornets are good enough to pull off a win and get the upset over Montana State if they let them hang around. That being said, I do think the Bobcats are poised to go out and get a win on the road 
and win by double digits because Tommy Malott's back in action and Sean Chambers is playing like a big sky offensive player of the year contender. So I do like their chances to go in and get a W on the road in a big time matchup. One thing to remember, the Bobcats have a big matchup the following week with the Idaho Vandals on the road in Moscow at the Kibbe Dope. So you got to think they're going to be looking ahead just a little. You got to stay locked in on this opponent. I expect Coach Brett Vegan to have his team ready, prepared, and focused on the moment versus Sac State. But that's something to consider. Bobcats can't play around. Need to jump out to an early lead and take care of business because you do not want to let a talented quarterback in Caden Bennett and Sacramento State have their opportunities to win that football game because they could steal it. So that's my big Prediction there, you got to start fast. You got to have an impact early if you're the Bobcats. You can't wait around and let the Hornets hang around at home. So it's going to be a fun stretch of football to end the year for the Bobcats. They have some really tough games on the horizon, but those are the type of games as a fan, as a fan of the big sky, you root for the Bobcats. You love to watch those kind of games. You want to see your team playing steep competition and testing themselves, especially with the playoffs coming up. So expect Montana State to be well prepared for the playoffs this year. And as for the Grizz, they have some fun matchups on the horizon as well. But like I said, they're on a bye this week, so we'll get back to the Grizz next week, talk a little about their future matchups as well. So, hey, real quick, for more Grizz and Bobcats coverage, check out the Big Sky Now on the Hagedone Sports Network, available on YouTube and all major podcasting sites. Check that out. You can go to my Twitter, jdugan406, link in the bio there. I had to throw it out there if you're a big Sky football fan looking for a little extra coverage. We break down the whole conference, have the Northwest Media panel on there. Fritz Neighbor of the Daily Interlake talks some Grizz, talks some Big Sky. So a lot of fun there. But so that'll do it for this week's show. It was a fun one and really looking forward to that. Nationally televised Montana State game this weekend. Last week we had the Grizz on ESPN2. This week we get the Bobcats on ESPN2. Gotta love that. Shout out the ESPN broadcast last week. They did do a great job. George Sedano, Orlando Franklin were a lot of fun to listen to. Or the Vandals Montana game. You could tell they really did their homework. And hopefully we get another great broadcast this upcoming week if you are tuned into the national broadcast. So thank you as always to everybody for checking out the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and I'm out. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad. It's a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information.